their part. Joining me to talk about this, David Bonson is here at Post 9 from Hightower's Bonson Group. Bill Smead from Smead Capital Management, welcome to you both. Uh, earlier today, Double Line Capital CEO Jeff Gunlock did appear on the halftime report, and he was talking about his outlook on markets. It wasn't a very positive one for the coming year. Let's take a quick listen. The VIX can't seem to settle down, so we're in a volatility regime. This is completely, obviously different from what we experienced in 2017. It's payback time. 2017 was the easiest investment year of all time. The risk-adjusted returns of the stock market were the, probably the best in history. And, of course, this year, as I've said before, we're going to have a negative year in the stock market. In fact, right now we have a negative year in just about everything except commodities, which is the only thing that's really up. That was Jeff Dunlock earlier this afternoon. Payback time, David, until... I don't know what happened midday in the session today. We suddenly turned around and then we lifted higher. We closed almost at the highs of the session. Well, you may remember this guy who worked for CNBC a long time ago named Larry Kudlow, and I'm <laughs> calling it the Kudlow rally with my clients. It was right at the moment that the National Economic Council, Larry, in that capacity, made the comments on the tariffs that, again, we're posturing, we're negotiating, we're back and forth. Negotiating is the operative word. You think markets seized on the fact or we're, we're suddenly reminded, oh, oh, the president negotiated? and they felt better about that? It, it sounds like I'm saying this critically of the president, and I'm really not. But I do think that these days where the market's dropping 500, 700, big down days. We've had several of them in the last month. Those are days that the market is saying to itself, wait a second, is he serious? Is he really believe the stuff he's saying about trade and tariffs? Other more rational, calm days, I think the market says, okay, there's cooler heads. There's guys like Gary Cohn, Larry Cuddle advising the president. I don't think we're going to full-blown trade war, but we shouldn't be playing around with it. We heard from Sarah Huckabee Sanders at the White House just a short time ago. Here's what she had to say when she was specifically asked if the president was worried about the loss of wealth caused by the recent stock market volatilities and she said no she also said that short-term pain was seen as worth it for long-term success now if you told me the market sold back off and turned negative on that i wouldn't be surprised david but it didn't in fact we moved to the highs of the day right and again the markets in my opinion are having to absorb what they believe is really going to play out what they i mean they can't i don't know if you heard also earlier in the day steve bannon said oh to hell with wall street let the market go down the, the market doesn't believe that that's the policy of the administration. There's some real grown-ups in the room there that I think are trying to drive sensible renegotiation with China, but not going to full-blown trade war. The president still is a little loose with his Twitter lips at times. Do you think, Bill, the market picks up the negotiating uh, posture of the U.S. to articulate that clearly? If it, it sounds like the, this is one of those where it's like, look, we want improvement in China and, uh, you know, steel and aluminum. We want improvement in intellectual property. And maybe that leaves more wiggle room for some resolution. I think so. I think that the problem that we face is that um, it's one or the other. Either they're going forward with tariffs that are going to be contractionary in our economy, or they're telegraphing that it's just a negotiating ploy, and it brings me back to President Trump's criticism of President Obama about announcing what he was doing in Afghanistan, right. saying it wasn't an effective way to go about doing it. Fundamentally, I actually think that there's a lot of transparency. The Chinese know where we're trying to go. Uh, there's going to be, there has to be face saving for the president, and I think that there will be, but some Substantively, the intellectual property side should be separated from the tariffs as a policy matter. There's things we can do to go directly after those that are committing the infractions. You don't think we can use pressure of tariffs, that threat, to I, I, I make would, them move and acquiesce on but, intellectual property? But see, property? the we here is the question. The we is not the Chinese in this broad, abstract sense. It's individual actors that are cheating, and we need to go after them the way oh, we would have any other country. about thousands and thousands of Chinese enterprises. or I, I, think, I think it probably is thousands of Chinese enterprises. You want us to go after them one by one? I, wa I want us to go after the people that have done something wrong, not after American farmers, not after consumers of Ford automobiles. We can't punish the wrong actor for what someone else is doing. You have mentioned everybody what's going on with Spotify in the meantime here before we go. Uh, the company went made its debut yesterday, of course, in that direct listing. A very different kind of beast from the typical IPO. Sima Modi's here with an update on how they did on day two. Sima? Hey, uh, Kelly. Well, Spotify actually staged a late-day comeback in its second day of trade. Shares of the music streaming giant fell by as much as 9% in early trade. Paired losses closed down just about 3%. Now, Spotify was able to finish above its reference price of 132, but still sizably off its highs of 169 that it hit yesterday. A name, of course, that we will be continuing to watch after uh, its listing yesterday. Kelly, back to you.
Seema, thank you. And David, in a word, what does this mean to Wall Street, do you think? In terms of the Spotify yeah. comeback? I think that uh, any IPO activity is kind of interesting. It's been so light for so long. Um, I'm interested to see going forward uh, just any innovations in the investment banking. We hear so much about the improvements taking place with Dodd-Frank reform for Goldman and J.P. Morgan and so forth. But I just wonder if there are entirely new ways that we're going to be able to bank America that could be very opportunistic. I think they just want to make sure they stay involved. You know, well, they have a place at the table. That's right.